Hello and welcome to East Mojo, my report, where we bring you all the latest happenings from the East and the Northeast of India. This is Chandan Pandey, Tripura correspondent, and today I will be your host. So before we start giving you the COVID updates for the day, uh, we are also joined by the other correspondents. We have Princess joining us from Meghalaya. She will be giving us the updates for the day. But before she gives us the COVID update, uh, there's a pro protest going on um, in Meghalaya. What is it all about? I just uh, wanted to know from Princess. Very good evening, Chanda. So, uh, as you know, today today it's a uh, joint action committee of Eastern Hills University. They held a silent protest uh, uh, in the campus of the uh, Nehu itself. And uh, we had three organizations who were part of this project. We had this uh, student and the trade uh, association. And uh, uh, no, princess, princess, you're getting yeah. cut off. Maybe, maybe if you could just use the order. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, that the main uh, aim of this protest is uh, demanding that, you know, the term of the uh, vice chancellor of Nehu should not be extended, and uh, his term will end on 23rd September. So uh, these, uh, you know, association or these organizations who are holding a silent protest today, they don't want that his uh, tenure should be extended because what they've seen during his five years tenure is that his performance was very poor and that uh, there were many issues, several issues that they had raised. And in, in fact, we, uh, we had reported a story on the website also, which is already up uh, and uh, published on the website. And we've uh, also interacted with the uh, chairman of the Joint uh, Action Committee, who had spoken to us and, and said that, you know, uh, the uh, vice chancellor has not performed very well. And uh, also there are many issues. He has given wrong information to the parliament. Not even one meeting was held in, uh, during his tenure. So this was uh, the, uh, uh, the silent protest uh, pertaining to. And uh, uh, also, uh, you know, like I mentioned, uh, they were holding us uh, placards. Uh, which uh, were uh, condemning the uh, vice chancellor's performance and also uh, clearly mentioning that they do not want him to extend his uh, t uh, term as a vice chancellor in the university. Right. So, Princess, uh, if you could just now tell us about the COVID scenario in your state. Uh, yes, Chandan. Uh, for, uh, concerning the COVID-19 uh, updates, uh, for today, uh, the total active cases that we've recorded in the state is 42 new fresh cases of uh, uh, 42 fresh uh, COVID-19 cases were recorded. And this takes the total active cases in the state to 1,343. That's the active uh, total uh, COVID-19 cases in the state. And we've also seen uh, a good recovery for today. Uh, you know, uh, Meghali has witnessed a good recovery today. Just for today, 156 uh, fresh uh, new recovered cases were recorded. Now, this takes the total recovered cases uh, to a total of uh, 1,716. That's the uh, uh, total recovered cases in the state. And remember that the death in the state has now risen to 17. Chandan. Right. Thank you so much, Princess, for that update from the state of Meghalaya. So now, as Simran has not join us for the day so i will be giving you the updates for the covid 19 from assam so assam has so far reported a total of 128244 covid 19 positive cases of this total positive case the number of death in the state now stands at 370 which is quite low in compared to uh, the state if i speak about tripura which has a population of 40 lakh it has reported already more than 150 positive uh, deaths in the state while assam has reported just 370 covid related death and the number of active cases in the state now stands at 28,798, while the number of recovered cases in the state now stands at 99,073, which means Assam will shortly uh, uh, cross the mark of one lakh recovered case, which is quite good in compared the way Assam has uh, recovered from this COVID-19 virus. The state government, they took a number of measures, which includes plasma therapy for the COVID-19 positive patients. Uh, as we have seen in most of the states like Delhi, uh, West Bengal and other states which had started plasma therapy, including Mumbai, they got uh, Maharashtra, Mumbai, they got good results from this plasma therapy. Even the model that was used in Assam has now started giving its result and uh, other states like Tripura are also uh, planning to start it, which I'll be speaking about later. So, but before I speak about that, now I will go to Nagaland where Medu will be joining us to give us a uh, 
and news uh, which is also a breaking news that an accidental blast was reported in Dimapur which led to a death of one person and four person were seriously injured so what is all about meadow uh chandan yes thank you so there has been a blast in Dimapur uh, reportedly at the UNB colony at Burma camp uh, according to right. the state police as per the pre uh, preliminary investigation that they have conducted it was observed that uh, a an iron scrap worker who was, uh, you know, pounding on a uh, on a suspected vintage bomb with a hammer, uh, went off. And the, uh, during this time, when the incident happened, you know, it, uh, one person was dead and four others were injured. So, uh, according to the state police, mm -hmm. this was an accidental blast uh, that caused uh, the casualty of one person, leaving four others injured. Um, so far, this is the updates we have, but uh, our, what I wish to make a mention that, you know, our correspondent from the Mapu Rong Pang is on a detailed report. Uh, for this, I request our viewers, our readers to stay tuned to our website at East Mojo. It will shortly be live on our website with a detailed report. So uh, this is in regard to the blast day in the Mapu Chandan. Right, Madhu, so I will come back to you. And uh, as just Madhu said that our correspondent for the Mapu Rong Pang is uh, on this copy and he's in the uh, on ground zero so the copy will be shortly live on our website you can read it at www.eastmoja.com so now uh, before i go to irani who is waiting for us in itanagar uh, i'll give a covid updates for the state of mizoram mizoram has so far uh, reported a total of 1123 uh, covid confirmed case of this the total number of recovered cases in the state now stands at 745 the number of active cases in the state of mizoram now stands at 378 while the number of uh, patients who tested positive and migrated from the state, this, this number stands at two. And uh, the number which I should mention again and again that the state has not reported a single COVID-19 related death. So it shows how the state has been able to control the COVID-19 virus in the state. Uh, the people have uh, abided by the protocol and the SOPs uh, guidelines given by the state government and the center, particularly if I say, uh, which is why the state has not reported a single COVID related death and it is the only state in entire country where a single person has not succumbed to this virus. So um, this is something coming from Mizoram, but now I will go to Irani and get the latest update uh, from Itanagar. There's also a exclusive news and a breaking news which she has just shortly filed. So what is all about Irani? Yeah, hi Chandan, a very good evening to uh, the viewers. So first off, I would like to start with the breaking news, which is the abducted Arunachali youths uh, are being traced and PLA, that is People's Liberation Army uh, of China, responds to the Indian Army. So the five Arunachali youths right. reportedly you know, abducted uh, by the Chinese PLA from Natural Circle under Upper Subhan Street District of Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, they have been found, and this news was, uh, we got this uh, information after the Union Minister for Sports and Youth Affairs, Mr. Kiran Rijiju, tweeted at around 5 p.m. Uh, right. in the evening. So he, in his tweet, wrote that China's PLA has responded to the hotline message sent by the Indian Army. And they have confirmed that the missing youths from Arunachal Pradesh have been found by their side. Further modalities to hand over the persons uh, to our authorities being worked out. So this was his tweet. And uh, the five youths who uh, were reportedly been abduct abducted by the Chinese PLA are Tanu Bakar, Prasad Ringling, Narudiri, Dongtu Ebia, and uh, Torch Singkam. And uh, all these five uh, youths belongs to the Tagin community. Chandan. Right. So, Irani, now if you could give us the COVID updates. And before you give us the COVID updates, I just wanted to know, uh, we have been following this news. There have been also in instances like this in the past where people from Indian territory, they crossed the border unintentionally and they, they were also uh, taken under the, by the PLA. So if you could just uh, shower some light on that. Yes. Yes, Chandan. I, and yeah, you, that's, uh, you know, that's something which I wanted to tell, but maybe uh, due to the breaking news and a very good news for us, I forgot that part. So previously in the month of April, Indian Army had successfully facilitated the safe return of a 21-year-old Arunachali youth who had crossed over to the Chinese territory in search of herbs on March 19th right. and had gone missing right. since. So the youth who has been identifi identified as uh, T. Singkam had gone to collect herbs in the Asapila sector near the McMahon 
line in Upper Subhansi district again. So this is the second incident in a year in a row that uh, people right. from Indian territory, you know, from India's uh, citizen, they have, you know, uh, crossed the McMahon line and reached the Chinese territory. Right. But uh, I also want to, you know, uh, tell our viewers that uh, those five youths were taken from the Indian territory, not from the Chinese side. So uh, it's uh, the Sera 7 area from where the, those five youths were taken comes under Indian territory, which is around uh, 40 to 50 kilometers inside uh, Indian territory. So they were taken from Sera 7 area. That means like inside Indian territory with 50 to 40 kilometers uh, from the McMahon line. Chandan. Right. Thank you, Irani, for that update. So now if you could just give us with the COVID-19 updates for the day. Yeah, if we look into the data which was provided by the health department yesterday, uh, we could see that capital complex is still at the top with the highest number of active cases. Uh, as of now, 288 active cases are in capital complex, followed by Vesyang with 212 active cases. And if we look into the overall data, uh, the number of active cases in the state is 1,576. 3,596 people have already recovered, and with eight deaths, mm -hmm. the state tally stands at 5,180. Thank you. Thank you, Irani, for that update. So, uh, quite a good news coming in from the state of uh, Arunachal Pradesh. The Indian youth who lost their way, not in fact lost their way, who were abducted by PLA, and they have now responded to the hotline message given by the Indian Army. So. Uh, shortly, they will return to their nation in their state in Arunachal Pradesh. And amidst this uh, banning of uh, Chinese app and the standoff in Galwan Valley and going on clash between the two nation states. So this is a good news coming in for the state of Arunachal Pradesh. So now I'll give you the updates for the COVID-19 from Manipur since Sally is not joining us for the day. So Manipur has reported so far a total of 7,106 COVID-19 positive cases. Of this, a total number of recovered cases in the state now stands at 5,358. And the state has a total active case, 1,710, while the COVID death has further increased and now it stands at 38. So this is the COVID-19 situation from the state. Uh, just to inform our viewers that Manipur government is taking all the measures and SOPs are being implemented. The people uh, have been uh, uh, have been informed about the awareness they, they're being addressed by the officials in all the concerned districts and subdivisions so that they follow all the guidelines by the state. So that's, that, that is why the state has now started uh, reducing the COVID-19 COVID positive cases and therefore the numbers have now uh, slightly reduced from in compared to other states. Now I will go back to Mado and get the COVID-19 updates for the day. Mado. Uh, thank you, Chandan. So I'm going to start off with the new cases that have been detected here in the state today. So today we've seen that 25 new cases have been reported here in the state. And out of this, a total of 21 of them alone are from Kohima. Two of them are from Mon and one each is from, uh, you know, Mokchung and Kifiri. So um, we yet to get the breakout, the official breakout, you know, the segregation of data as to which sector, uh, you know, from which sector the cases have been reported. However, this is the information that we have. We also yet to receive these uh, updates if there has been any new recovered cases in the state. But so far, um, you know, the state stands at 4,250. That's in addition with the new cases. And um, a total of uh, 550 are active cases. These cases could also likely go down if there are new recovered cases that will be reported uh, soon, I hope. And, um, uh, the state's total recover, uh, recovered cases it is at 3,674. The state has eight uh, confirmed deaths of COVID-19 and 11 cases are of migrated cases. Now, besides the eight death cases, you know, two deaths are also added to the state's tally. But these two are COVID-19 positive, um, but not due to COVID-19, which means the, the cause of that was not due to COVID-19. And besides uh, the 10 deaths, uh, there are five deaths which are under investigation. So, so far among the 15 deaths that have been reported here in the state, a total of 14 of them are from the Mapur and one is from Mon. Uh, we've also seen that although most of the death cases are reported from the Mapur, the health officials informed that 
you know, some of the cases are from Assam and some are uh, being referred from the other districts. So it is not necessarily that uh, the, the, that cases that have been reported here in this in the Mahur are residents of the district. So uh, so far, this is the updates, the updates that we have. The latest update will also be, uh, you know, updated on our website at eastmodo.com. Chandan. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for that update. So now, uh, before I come back to Tripura's COVID-19 update, now I would just like to um, inform our viewers that the Bajan blowout well, which was those uh, in Assam after uh, more than three months of uh, hard work by the officials and experts were also called from uh, uh, other abroad countries. So now it has again started, uh, has started fire in, in, in that well of hours after the officials informed that they have successfully uh, dose the fire there. Uh, a detailed copy has been published by our correspondent, uh, Rishu Kalantri, from there. Uh, he has informed everything there. I would request our viewers to go through the copy in the uh, Assam section. You have to just uh, uh, write www.eastmoza.com and click on to Assam section. You will find a detailed copy filed by Rishu Now inform about one more development from coming from the state of Assam though it's a national uh, data released by the National Statistical Office. It says that Assam stands at second. Assam ranks second in, in terms of literacy rate, while Kerala has again uh, emerged first with uh, uh, Assam has got 85.9%, while Kerala has got 96.2%, which is uh, uh, the highest percent of literacy rate in any states of India. So this copy is also filed by Team East Mojo, and I would request our viewers to give it a read and know about your uh, states, uh, how, where your states stands at in, in terms of literacy rate. Even Tripura was at a time uh, ranging between the top five states, but after the change in the government in 2018, the education minister, he himself said that the data which was being provided by the state government for many years was not authentic. A number of people in the state are still illiterate, but the data which was being provided by the then left from government was not authentic. So this is something interesting, and I would request again our viewers to go through this copy. One last update coming in from Assam is that the real-life uh, hero and real-life villain Sonu Sood has once again emerged uh, as a hero for uh, a brain tumor surgery uh, patient from Assam. He has sponsored the money. Uh, for a brain tumor patient who had to go through a brain tumor surgery recently in Assam. So he spent uh, 2.5 lakh rupees for that uh, surgery. The amount was estimated to be more than 2 to 2.5 lakh, which was sponsored entirely by Sonu Sood after he got to know the information through a tweet. Also to inform our viewers that recently he had informed uh, all his uh, fans and well-wishers that he receives in a day more than 10 to 12,000 uh, tweets, requests, and social media, if we include all the social media requests he receives in a day more than around one lakh request. So it becomes sometimes difficult for him to address uh, everyone, but he's been trying. Uh, in fact, he's the only person from the B town who has helped out all the people in need. And we have been filing a number of copies on him. So I would request our viewers to go through this copy and share it as much as possible and inspire people to come forward at a time like a global pandemic where COVID-19 virus has resulted in millions of deaths across the world. So now coming back to COVID-19 updates from the state of Tripura. Tripura has so far reported a total of 15,526 COVID-19 uh, confirmed cases. The number of COVID-19 recovered uh, data now stands at 9,048. The number of active cases in the state now stands at 6,307. The number of patients who tested positive and later migrated from the state, that data now remains at 22. While the death, which was increasing for the last two weeks, has now finally come to an halt with uh, the deaths being at 149. Just to inform our viewers that Tripura reported more than 60 uh, deaths in, um, uh, in a short span of 10 days. So it was quite alarming for the state government. The chief minister himself reviewed the overall situation in COVID hospital in GBP, Govind Ballapan Hospital. He had a meeting with officials concerned with uh, the COVID world. Also to inform, last evening there was an emergency meeting called by the chief minister who also holds the portfolio of health department. Uh, and as per a notification issued by the state government, a team of 10 IS officer, young IS officer and 10 
young doctors have been uh, made by the government who will look after the COVID situation in the state. And also to inform our viewers that recently the education minister, who is also the in charge of cabinet ministers, he briefs the media every evening. He informed that a team of experts with doctors from Ministry of uh, Health Affairs, they will be uh, visiting the state shortly to provide uh, guidelines to guide the doctors to uh, inform how should how the state should manage the COVID-19 virus since the number of deaths was reported even uh, just to inform our viewers that Tripura has only one COVID hospital that is Gobind Vallapan Hospital which had initially had uh, 110 COVID-19 bed but initially when the number of cases and the deaths started increasing the authorities uh, decided to uh, increase the infrastructure and now it has around a capacity of 300 bed where the patient around 100 and, uh, 280 patients are undergoing treatment of various categories which includes mild symptoms, symptoms and uh, serious uh, critical patients. So this is something about the COVID update from the state and the last uh, news coming from Tripura for the day is that the opposition leader and former chief minister Mr. Manish Tarkar, he spoke with a group of uh, uh, journalists today in the evening where he expressed his uh, um, displeasure over the way the COVID is being uh, managed in the COVID hospital GBP. Uh, he also said that he also uh, echoed the same uh, uh, way which the former health minister Mr. Shudhi Prai Barman last day during his visit to GB hospital. He said that the people of Tripura have lost their faith from the COVID-19 uh, uh, loan hospital and they are afraid to visit the hospital and they're choosing to remain at home rather than visiting the hospital since the management has completely failed to save lives a number of people died to mismanagement and he also appealed to the chief minister to take stock of the situation and he also gave a three days ultimatum to the chief minister that if he doesn't control the situation then he will take a step just to inform our viewers that right now in Tripura we can see a political disbalance is going on here the former health minister who also happens to be son of the former chief minister Mr. Sudhir Roy Borman uh, he he was once a opposition leader in the Congress government but later he uh, he changed his wing. He went to Trinamool Congress and uh, prior to 2018, BGP, uh, BJP government formed uh, in the state. He joined BJP and uh, with a group of MLAs, he joined the BJP and the government was formed. He was made the health minister, but after 2019 election, he was removed from his post of uh, health department due to some unknown reason. But uh, political analytics says that he had some contact with other political parties, which resulted in his removal from the cabinet. So now what we can see, a group of MLAs have now once again come back to his wing and they are supporting him. They are visiting with him in the hospital. They are, they are also uh, moving with him from one place to other. They are also putting the same demand which Mr. Shudhi Prai Barman has been trying to put for the last two, three months. Uh, soon after the state started reporting a number of COVID-19 deaths. So the political scenario as well as the COVID situation is getting interesting in the state. And I would request our viewers to keep a close eye in Tripura section to get all the updates from www.eastmojo.com. So this is all about coming from all the states of uh, uh, Northeast uh, that we got you all the stories for the day. Uh, before signing off, I would like to request all our viewers to like, share and subscribe our uh, social media platform. You can find us at uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and uh, also press the bell button to get all the updates in time to time. And just to inform our viewers that we also have a dedicated fact-checking team. Just if you have come across any news picture that looks fishy and you want it to be cross-checked, just send it across to editors at the rate eastmojo.com. We will get you the other side of the story. And that's a promise from our side. And before ending for the day, I would request our viewers to wear your mask, maintain social distancing, and not to step out of your home if it is not very necessary. This was Chandan Pandey reporting from Agartala. Remember, it's eastmoja.com.